Good morning, St. Paul's. Happy Pentecost. I'm uh, coming to you from our parish hall this morning. Um, there were already some tourists who wanted to uh, go look into the, the church, so instead of waiting for them, I decided to come in here and deliver this message for you. Um, this is a feast day, and it's a day of celebration, but it's also for us going to be a, a day with some heaviness and some mourning uh, as we see what's happening in the, our nation with uh, the rioting, the disquiet, the anger. And so that's going to be more the tenor of my message to you today is um, how do we view Pentecost? in light of what we see around us and the hope that is set before us. Well, no doubt you have heard <clears throat> about George Floyd, the 46-year-old African-American man who was arrested on Monday. Uh, an employee at a grocery store called the police uh, to accuse him, and possibly this is correct, of passing a counterfeit $20 bill. Uh, the video, which is viral, you may have seen it, shows Floyd's apprehension and his arrest. Uh, as you know, uh, Floyd repeatedly expressed, I can't breathe. He was held to the ground under the knee of a police officer and as we know today, George Floyd is dead. Some of the backstory um, that honestly doesn't, it shouldn't matter, but it is uh, perhaps illuminating for things that we assume and we don't know, is that George Floyd, before he uh, moved to Minneapolis, lived in Houston, lived in the third ward, which is a, uh, a rough part of the city, and was known for his uh, gospel proclamation, for helping spread the good news, for helping kids get off the street and choose Jesus rather than choosing a life of crime or uh, violence. Now, even if he hadn't done that, George Floyd did not deserve to die the way that he did. And he's, again, just another name of so many that have uh, suffered abuse. And a name to us, but a dear loved one and a friend to so many others. Well, today on Pentecost, um, we will be gathering outside, many of us. But if you're away, the Pentecost is when we gather to celebrate life in the Holy Spirit. Life is found in the breath of God. The Holy Spirit, of course, symbolized often as breath and wind. The Ruach Yahweh, the breath of the Lord. Life with freedom to breathe. But as I said at the opening, we cannot adequately worship today unless we also feel the horrendous tragedy of the apparent loss of this man's life cut short by loss of breath. In addition to that, a few days ago, we in the United States passed 100,000 deaths from COVID-19 in about three months time. I'm not gonna quibble about the statistics here. Was it really COVID? Was it something else? Um, we could play that game all day. But a common thread of those who suffer from this disease and this virus uh, is the attack on their breath. Often ventilators are required to aid in this necessary and in their case, horrifically painful gasping for air. I can't breathe. There's been a lot of death around us these past few months. And yes, I realize that there's always been death. Um, I think that's frankly a callous approach or response to this. Death is in our headlines. 
Fair enough. What I want us to consider this morning, though, is a, a different kind of death. And not that we push these others to the side. We cannot as a nation. But I want to also speak today about the death of hope and the death of freedom that is found in Christ. A death where the victims there utter those same fatal words. I can't breathe. From our reading of Acts this morning. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them. And a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. It later continues, as Peter says, This is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit. I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but have you ever been so stunned and overwhelmed by news that is so beautiful, that is, it's so good that it covers you in uh, almost this warmth of blessed assurance? Uh, it, 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 it falls on you like um, a beautiful breeze uh, that cools you in a hot day. Have you ever been so relieved by the realization that your life's journey is not so much about becoming anything, but perhaps about un unbecoming everything that isn't you, that you are actually unveiling your true self. So again, this news that you don't have to do all of these things to become something, you're actually having to unlearn things that have kept you from being who you actually are. Maybe if you're old enough, you remember the TV show to tell the truth. And they would always say at the end, will the real so-and-so please stand up? The real one, the real you. The gospel message of Jesus Christ is that news. You are loved beyond measure. Your life matters. The gospel invites us, asks us, and yes, I would say even begs us to stop believing the lies about ourselves which only seek to keep our throats under the heavy knees of legalistic tyrants. The gospel is inviting the real so-and-so to please stand up and breathe. Pentecost is the breath of that freedom which we find in God's presence. The free breath of his spirit that is sent to take up residence in humanity as we just heard from Peter quoting the prophet Joel. The spirit of God poured upon all flesh in you, in me, in every victim of the coronavirus, in George Floyd, in his arresting officers, upon all flesh. We appropriately mourn when physical life is snuffed out. May our hearts also feel the sorrow of life with our Lord that is stifled because of the prejudice or the weight of legalistic burdens that are loaded upon a neighbor's shoulders. It's almost as if they are the living dead, snuffing the life and the breath right out of them. Today on Pentecost, we celebrate the breath of life, the breath of God, God's life poured out upon and into us, into all flesh. The key, I think, here, as it relates certainly to what we've seen in Minneapolis and so many other places, 
is do we have the ability to see that breath upon every single person we encounter? Do we have the ability to see the breath of God in those with whom we disagree? In those whom we stereotype? I pray that God will reorder our stereotypes so that now our stereotype would be that we assume God's presence in those that we meet. No, we might not actually see it. But those people might say the same thing about you and me. Do they actually see it? We face uncertainties all the time. Right now we face still the uncertainty of this virus, although we're getting a little better grip on it. Violence continues to kick relentlessly at a life of tranquility. The lies of prejudice and hatred seek a chokehold to exert their control over us. When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, he was not talking about the breath of his kingdom. <laughs> oh, no. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men see visions and your old men dream dreams. These visions and these dreams are a future inviting our hope. They're inviting our faith. These visions and dreams are inviting our co-creation our cooperation with God and His Holy Spirit. These dreams and these visions, they speak to each one of us here in Edenton, in the Third Ward in Houston, in East L.A., in Minneapolis, all across our world. These visions and dreams Speak of a future where humanity can exclaim in all sincerity and honesty, I can breathe. Amen.